Hey guys, it is Scott the Steamroller Steen with winnersandwiners.com. It is Monday, the 5th of September. It is your last Monday night without an NFL game for quite some time. Welcome, because this is your play of the day. As always, before we get rolling on the play of the day, if you go, would be so kind. Take a minute, smash that thumb, give us the uh, like. We appreciate the effort. We appreciate it every single day. And of course, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, get notified every time we put up brand new content. And of course, it's a brand new week. We want to know what you've got cooked up. Put those plays in the comment section. You get them right, you make a profit. We'll give you the shout out. You get enough of them right, and you could be the capper of the day. And if you want to shoot a little higher, aim for that brass ring. You could be the capper of the week. Just make sure you put your play in there. Put a BB beside it. Let me know it is your best bet. And you hit it, we'll get you on the board. And uh, if you miss it, well, you'll still be on the board, just a little lower. Um, and uh, not a lot of rules as far as the Capper of the Week contest. Play to anything, any single game you want to, underdog, favorite, whatever it is. Um, the only thing we do limit is the parlays. You can play parlays up to plus 200 in the payout. If you uh, put a parlay in there, I will just give you your first play on there as your best bet. So... Uh, if, it, if it's more than plus 200. All right, so there we go. That explains that. Let's take a look and see how we did yesterday. Not a bad way to close out the week, guys. We did hit the uh, Seattle-Cleveland under 3.5, or the Cleveland team total under 3.5. Holy shit, it only took about 10 hours, 11 hours, whatever it was. I think they had a close to a five-hour rain delay. Changed pitchers. Honestly, I thought we were screwed. <laughs> of course, Cleveland puts up a run in the first inning. I'm like, oh, that's off to a great start. But uh, they settled down and uh, held them till the uh, rain delay and did a nice job despite the fact they went to, uh, I believe, 11 innings on that game. Still, uh, Seattle wins at 6-3. to three, So we'll take that victory. Uh, split on the premium side. We had uh, Philadelphia-San Francisco at San Francisco minus 118. We had uh, Milwaukee-Arizona over 7.5. Couldn't quite get home there. We did have Florida State plus 4. Also had Florida State over uh, 51, so I was kind of uh, I was kind of torn there as I saw the uh, and I wasn't actually wasn't around to see the second half of the game, but when I watched it on the replay, I'm like, okay. So uh, what we really needed was Florida State to not fumble, score that touchdown, and then let LSU drive down the field against the prevent defense. I would have given us both wins there, but that's not how it worked out. So we split on the uh, football game and our best bet of the day was the San Diego Padres, L.A. Dodgers, over 9.5, and, and that one cashed. And that runs our uh, best bet 3-1 and one this month. And my play of the day, the freebie, 4-0. Oh. So, yeah, we'll uh, time to quit. Just call it a good. The month of September is over, kids. Uh, if you want to get uh, my premium plays, including my best bet, got a, a new code for you. It's Monday. It's new code. All right, pretty, pretty, pretty excited. Um, that code is K56RLST. That'll get you 25% off. The normal best bet price of $49.99. And of course, the best bet, it is guaranteed. You don't win, you don't pay. That's the way it should be. All right. So that being said, I uh, got the links in the show description for today. Got the link and the code there for your usage. Let's take a look and see what we got cooked up. Shall we? It's a uh, Monday night football game featuring college teams. How about that? It's Georgia Tech and Clemson get together there at ACC Battle. We're going to play the under 51 in this one. Guys, thought about laying the points of the Clemson, and I still don't feel bad about that, but I think the under's a little better play. You know, Clemson, because they didn't make the playoffs, they lost three games, played close, close games with kind of mm, shitty teams, including this Georgia Tech team, by the way. Uh, everybody kind of forgot about them last year. Well, they still, like I said, won 10 games for the whatever it is. It's a, I know that uh, like 16th year in a row or something ridiculous. Um Problem with Clemson last year, likely to be the problem with Clemson again this year. I don't think I'm buying the hype that puts them as a top five, top six team. And it's mainly uh, the quarterback situation with G.J. Uluk. God damn it. Uagalale. There you go. Uh, fans are going to be impatient if he struggles. They are going to want to see super freshman Cade Klubnik. He is the uh, heir apparent, and we'll, uh, we'll see how long D.J. can hold him off. I think there's going to be some kinks worked out on this offense, regardless of who starts. I expect to see him struggle uh, for at least a half, give or take. Um, I don't see many struggles on the defensive side, however, because this team, uh, despite losing a bunch of players to the NFL, once again stacked on defense. Of course, Clemson, more of a, uh, a reload kind of team other than uh, regroup. So um, this is a, 
a front seven that may be the best in football. The Georgia Tech offense, not going to have much success against these guys. They are uh, they lost their best back to Alabama. They're bringing back uh, Sims for another campaign. That's his third year there. He hasn't been great. Um, the biggest problem for the Yellow Jack is going to be the inexperience on the offensive line. Uh, they got a bunch of new faces there, some youngsters. This is a bad team to cut your teeth against as far as this Clemson goes. Um, I think they're going to be living in the Georgia Tech backfield for a ton of three and outs. I would be stunned if Tech topped 13. That's my that's my kind of my my uh, mid range for them. Uh, with the Clemson offense struggling a little bit, I think this one should be able to go under the total of 51. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the Georgia Tech Clemson under 51. At the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, well, there you go. The moment we've all been waiting for. You guys know how I did. Let's check in on y'all yesterday as we wrap up the Capper of the Week contest. Uh, your Capper of the Week contest, pretty good day. Everything's coming up, no, everything's coming up Nowak. It's Scott Nowak, uh, when the dust cleared, ended up uh, winning today. He goes plus 287. That's your Capper of the Week right there. Uh, the Butcher, second place. Uh, despite ripping him off of shout-outs all the time, I am writing his scores down on the capper of the week. So, uh, Butcher, sorry for missing you. And uh, you were second place there at plus 180. Anthony Handy, 159. Steve Godon, 157. Zewa Carter, 154. Citizen Sammy, 104. 504 Trader, Chris Sharborough, Clarence Davis, Crystal Craig, Daniel Angelero, all plus 100. Uh, Justin McAfee, 85, R. Rivera, 91180, and Bronco Devil, a profitable capper. However, it was not enough to give us a winning week as we uh, end up losing uh, 343 as a group. 31 cappers again, that comes out to uh, minus 0, 1.06 units apiece. So uh, not as good as this week, but if you put the two weeks together, we are still up as a group. So yeah, there you go. Um, so let's see what we got for, uh, oh, you guys know the drill. If you want to be on the show, we're going to re record it, record it on Thursday. You'll be able to take any NFL game, uh, any, uh, NCAA game from Friday on any NFL game from, uh, Sunday. Uh, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to have it up in time for the Thursday night game, but, uh, we'll open up, of course, any baseball game, of course, we'll, we will open it up, uh, whatever your best underdog is for the weekend action. Uh, that's what we'll be picking. And, of course, Nowak, you have first shot at it. Butcher, second shot, Anthony Handy, Steve Godon, Zewa Carter, and Citizen Sammy. If you guys all want to shoot me an email, let me know if you're in. Uh, it is, as always, scott at winnersandwiners.com. All one word, scott at winnersandwiners.com. All right? So, I'll be anxious to hear from you guys. Hopefully, we'll get uh, somebody on the show this week. Uh, as far as Capper of the Day goes, a couple of retroactive shout-outs. As we mentioned, uh, Nowak had a great day. Uh, yesterday, he was the capper of the day as Western Kentucky kept pouring it on and they uh, easily covered the 16 and a half. So we had St. Louis, Western, uh, St. Louis run line, Western Kentucky at plus 292. That comes out to 1 and 0 plus 1460. Congratulations, Scott Nowak. You, my friend, were the capper of the day and you're the capper of the week. Well done. Uh, Butcher, as I mentioned, been shorting him. He had Oregon State yesterday as they blasted Boise State. And as far as uh, yesterday's action go, Alvin Taylor goes 3-1. and one, And I'm going to guess plus 346, give or take. The question is, he had Atlanta minus 3.5. I'm guessing the alternative run line is going to be in the neighborhood of plus 200. So, Alvin, if you're listening, let me know exactly how you did. A mighty fine day either way. Crystal Craig, 3-0 plus 378. By the way, guys, if you're not listening to Crystal on baseball, you could do a lot worse. She uh, knows baseball. She really knows her Jays. Uh, when she puts a bet out, it's usually a pretty darn good one. So uh, you've been told. Uh, Bronco Devil, uh, making me uh, add up all the runs for the Grand Salami. Love you, brother. Um, he went 1-0 plus 500 as the Grand Salami total was 139.5. He had the under. Uh, the Butcher, another fine day, 1-0 plus 500. He had the Twins' first five-team total over 1.5, 504 trader. It's a nice two-teamer, 1-0 plus 10-10. Had the L.A. Dodgers on the money line and Florida State plus 4.5. That paid plus 202. Nicely done, 504 trader. But your capper of the day, check it out, guys. He's all the way out at sea. 
think he's headed back pretty soon, though. It's Brian Gillahan, everybody, going 1-0 plus 1180. He had Arizona first five run line and Milwaukee first five team total under one and a half. Could have made that full game as the Brewers got nothing going, put up just one run, Arizona. Uh, very nicely done indeed. So uh, congratulations, Brian Gillahan, plus one and oh, one and oh, plus 1180. You, Captain, are the capper of the day. Well done to you. Well done to the rest of you guys. Uh, mighty fine capping out there. Let's keep it going. Uh, give me a holler on uh, on your uh, on the email there. We'll talk. Get you guys on the show. All right, everybody have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow doing our same thing, same bad time, same bad channel. As I will comb the records, check the matchups, all the land movements, and I will find you the best chance for us both to pick up those winning tickets and head back to the window. You guys, take care. We'll see you then.